Folks, don't miss the Fisherman's Fishing Show and Seminar Thursday, September 22nd at the Long Island Hilton Hotel and Convention Center starts at 6 p.m. Hey, the first 200 people receive a goodie bag with everything you see here. And if you're one of the early bird arrivers, the first 100 are going to get a Super Strike custom lure made specially for this show. Now, the next 200 receive everything you see here in a goodie bag. The next 100 receive everything you see here. And with over 100 vendors, some seminars from the greatest authorities in fishing, like Dave Marciano and the Fisherman's Gray's Fish Tag Research Seminar, you're going to have an excellent night here and at 9 o'clock, the largest raffle that we've ever done. Don't miss it, folks. Thursday, September 22nd, the Huntington Hilton. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Kingfish and Albies in Monmouth, mullet on the move in ocean and South Jersey reef sites holding the best fluke action. Those are the headlines in this week's digital edition of the Fisherman Magazine, New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition. I'm Jim Hutchinson. It's September 15th, 2022, and this is the day, the 15th of September, which I've always considered the start of the finger mullet run at the Jersey Shore. Now, typically you can expect to see the V-wakes of these finger mullet somewhere at some point down the Jersey Shore from now through the middle of October. I usually have gone September 15th to October 15th. You can't set your watch by it. You can't circle it on your calendar. It's not an absolute. Water temperatures will play a big part. Uh, wind conditions, of course, any tropical systems. And of course, striped bass are not always going to be on these mullet schools. But if they are, the round of arsenal apparel of items that you want to, weapons of destruction that you want to throw, include those stubby metal lips, the swim shads, and my absolute favorite, the little neck popper by Super Strike. You've got a couple of different versions. You've got the, the blue and the white that doesn't float. That, that, that casts beautifully against the wind. And of course, then you've got the floating versions, but these are, I'll tell you, this has become my confidence lore. Shameless plug, no, this is a darn good plug. It's a perennial favorite. And again, this happens to be my confidence lore throughout the season, but it's fantastic for those finger mullet. Other options, of, clues, uh, of course, include the SP minnows, your bombers, uh, a new one out from Berkeley this fall. Uh, is the Berkeley Juke Saltwater 100 mullet. It's a quick shot, this mullet run, but look for them. Give them a shot. Keep your eyes out along the shore. I'm still way behind work uh, at this point, working this week on our editorial deadline for the October edition of the Fisherman Magazine, which comes out in a couple of weeks. In fact, my backlog from staying on top of editing and writing has left me serious, seriously neglecting my own boat. But that has to change, and hopefully it'll change right after this deadline. But we are in a great time of year for bait in the back bays and for popping and plugging along those sedges and sod banks. Uh, at the Jersey Shore as some of those stripers feed on those mullet, on the peanut bunker, and every other great bait that flows out of those estuaries. I checked with my father this week. He went out fluke fishing uh, out of Little Egg Inlet earlier this week, and I asked him, I said, give me a bay water temperature, and he said 77 degrees right outside of Cape Horn Marina, and that was right around the time of the high tide, but I expect those backwater temperatures to start going down a little bit as these cooler nights start to hit us. But again, ocean water temperatures are really warm. And even on those incoming tide, like I said, the, the, the incoming to the high tide earlier this week, it's kept the bay water temperatures warm. And warm enough for some really solid blowfish action in the back bay, especially in the Barnegat Bay area, as I noted last week. In fact, well, Captain Joe Rizzo of Barnegat Bay Fishing Charters reported back to field editor Ashley Viola this week. On an awesome day Saturday, he said he had 100 keeper blowfish for his charter. Said he didn't even get the chum pots into the water and anglers were already hooked up. Uh, I heard the same thing from Captain Brett Taylor there in Barnegat Bay, who said he had Joe Z and his wife Terry from Point Pleasant in on a three-hour charter on Saturday for a big old fish fry. So that's great news. And again, we talked about that last week, setting out the chum pot 
a great opportunity for you on the weekend. Saturday looks good. Uh, if you want to get those kids out, get on the blowfish, maybe a couple of puppy drum in the central and south Jersey area, uh, or load up the fish pen with some fine and tasty Cape May goodies. By the way, Captain Brett and his fellow members of the Beach Haven Charter Fishing Association, uh, they're having a little party next week aboard the pirate ship Black Pearl. The excursion is billed as a fireworks cruise. It runs from 7 to 8.30 p.m. on Friday, September 23rd. Now, this is a fundraiser, all part of the efforts by the BHCFA and their junior mates to raise money to build more reefs at least to sustain more reefs, Garden State, Barnegat, and Little Egg. Um, so if you wanna hit that, it's $75 for adults, just $25 for children aged 18, uh, just $25, like I said. You can call Captain John Lewis there, Beach Haven Charter Fishing Association and Insatiable Charters. He's got all the details, how you could party and support LBI reefs, 609-670-5980. Now, 12 days. As of today, September 15th, you have 12 days to enjoy the 2022 fluke season here at the Jersey Shore. Yes, I know. New York continues with an 18 and a half inch size limit through October 9th. They went with a larger size limit to give them additional time. And of course, Delaware's 16 inch four fish bag never closes. But here in New Jersey, September 27th is the final day of fluke so you're on your own personal boat obviously the reefs wrecks and rock piles are probably your best bet for the week ahead of us although my buddy nick cicero uh he said the river bite was good for him earlier this week again there's so much bait flowing out of these estuaries i always think at this time of year some of those fluke come back inside the inlet or close to the inlet mouth to feed on some of those baits that are flowing out of the inlet. So give that a shot as well. But I do know that boats like the Parker Pete out of Belmar, they're giving the bucktail and on that hard structure, a real good hard shot in the coming weeks to take advantage of those final days. Boats heading out of Manasquan as well are doing the same thing. I saw where the Jamaica too has been doing pretty well, putting a few fish on deck of seven pounds or so for customers. Down out of Barnegat, the super chick out of Barnegat Light found tough conditions on Saturday after last week's blow, but has come around to some solid fluking out of that inlet. In fact, saw where Pops Levering checked in with the folks at Fisherman's headquarters in Ship Bottom. I believe this was a, chip, uh, a trip on the super chick, 9.24 pounds on a six inch gulp grub. Another good LBI fish I saw this week was from Tyler Conrad. He's always on good fish. Check in a Surf City Bait and Tackle and find out how he got on this one. In a South Jersey report this week at thefisherman.com, field editor Anthony Califano heard from Dave and Tammy at Avalon Hodgepodge. They said the reef sites are where you'll find quantity and quality in terms of summer flounder. Townsend Inlet, for example, was hot. Uh, with fish falling for live minnows, squid, and gulp uh, over the weekend. The Miss Avalon reported fish to six pounds, eight ounces, while the private boaters reported limit catches of the summer flounder, a few trigger fish, and several mahi as well, just a few miles past the reef. So you're looking at Wildwood, you're looking at Cape May. Those are your reef sites. That's where you're gonna look for some of those biggest fluke, summer flounder, if you will, in these final days. By the way, up north, Raritan Bay, out of Staten Island, the Staten Island Tuna Club is hosting their fall fluke tournament on Saturday, September 17th. It's $300 per boat, but there's $6,000 payout from what I saw for the top three places, not counting the Calcuttas. For more details, you can call, contact Walt Fisher at 917-375-7600. A lot of folks I know are looking to put those limited snapper blues in the live well, cast netting on those peanut bunker, looking for some jumbo fluke. But folks, don't forget about the Fish Bites. We are the Fish Bites Nation, and this is your invitation. So grab some Fish Bites and get busy casting, because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. In Nick Konachewski's Beach Talk report at thefisherman.com this week, he said the surf needs a real jump start of cool nights to spark a mullet run out of the back. Just what we talked about. He did report on occasional sightings of Little Tunny and Bonita popping up 
uh, while the inlet areas are still spots to tangle with a few tog and possibly a sheep's head or two from, especially from Barnegat South into Cape May and across into Delaware, where we're still getting reports, uh, not just of sheep's head, but some pumpy drum as well uh, along the wall there near Lewis Harbor. Now, the surf surprise in Nick's report this week was fat kingfish along the rare and bay shore beaches on out to Sandy Hook. Phil at the tackle box, he said he's never seen anything like it before. Uh, first reports of false albacore up around Seabright as well. So it's just about time uh, to get out there and start throwing those tins and running and gunning along the beach looking for the false albacore. Heading into surf tournament season, of course, right now, uh, the LBI Surf Fishing Classic registrations are underway at Surf City Bait and Tackle, Fisherman's Headquarters, and Jingles. That tournament starts in October, but if you sign up early, you can get the hat and all the goodies. Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle in Brigantine, he let me know that the Fall Striper Derby is officially underway as of today. And it's not just striped bass but bluefish, tog, and kingfish in the mix as well. Kingfish should be plentiful along the New Jersey and Delaware oceanfront beaches for the next several weeks. Uh, I know that's why LBI, they added kingfish to their tournament lineup, so you can expect to get into a fish fry uh, all the way through October. So until the real striped bass action starts, go out there with a light tackle, enjoy some of those kingfish, bring something home for dinner. Again, have those medals handy if you're hitting the beaches. Uh, uh, the exo jigs, epoxy jigs, the tsunami slim waves. Keep your eye out for breaking fish. Could be those false albacore. And also look around for those wheeling and diving turns. Could be some bonita. Maybe we'll get another flash run of Spanish mackerel before it's all done. And of course, don't forget about our tournament at the Fisherman Magazine, our members only dream boat fishing challenge. It starts with your paid subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. It's followed by you catching a big enough fish, a qualifying contending fish that's on the leaderboard, and it all ends sometime in November with somebody cruising off with a 23 Steiger Miami powered by a Yamaha outboard. For this week's update on the Dreamboat standings, let's check in with my friend, the video maven, Tim Smith. With the days growing shorter and temperatures starting to cool down, the fishing will get red hot. And with this trend comes our first tog entry into the Dream Boat Challenge. Andre Ledoux from Beckett, Mass, weighed in this 9.66 pound tog, making it the first tog entry of the season, which obviously puts him in the first place tog category with 10 points. And here are our current top four positions. We have first place Rob Carrizano, second is Dean Paella, third Sam Dibner, and fourth Garrett Weir. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft 23 Miami powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Hey, everybody, it's Dave Anderson. I just want to give you a quick rundown of what's going on with the Coastal Kayak Clash. After two weeks without an entry, we finally have some new fish on the board, both of them in the hardtail category. The first one is a 15 and a half inch Benito, entered by Tom Hode. And the second is a 25 inch Albi, entered by none other than tournament leader, Justin Osa. That extends his tournament leading score to 12. Bob Wagner is in second place with five points, and Paul Sanford is holding down third place with three points. We'll head off short about 90 seconds, but first let's learn a little bit more about the sweet water options in the tri-state area. For more on that, here's my friend George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, all that rain over the past week really did us good, guys. It filled up those lakes, got those creeks and those rivers back up to kind of almost normal flow. And it's also turned that fishing bite on really well. You know, we're getting lots of stripers and bass and stuff in, in Wallen Pompac, uh, Beltsville, Knock and Mix, and all those great lakes are producing really well right now. And even better, we got the, so the rivers are producing even better than the lakes. You know, the Susquehanna River, I had my good friend Nick Canestra. He was hammering the smallmouth down there 
the lower Susquehanna, and even my good friend uh, Brian Swindle up in the northern Susquehanna getting into those smallmouths. So it's a good time of year to hit those smallmouths. Also, the Delaware, same thing. We're seeing lots of smallmouths hit, uh, stripers being hit, those residents. So they're, they're producing really well. But one thing I do want to talk about is my good friend Bruce Pashley checked in. He says, George, we are killing the snakeheads. And that's something I, I get a ton of questions about. You know, people always ask about how do you catch these snakeheads? Well, I think Bruce has these dialed in. He told me you want to use these soft plastics and you want to go back like in the Delaware River and those tidal areas back in the backwaters where it's kind of mucky and stuff. And I'll throw something like a frog, a topwater frog back there and just give it a few twitches. He says you really have to be patient. They're not super aggressive sometimes, but we give it a, some patience, take a couple minutes to get that retrieve in and bam, you're going to get yourself a nice little snakehead. Now, they're not only great, great fighting fish, they're also fantastic for the table. So I'm told I've yet to get out and get a couple myself, but that's certainly on the docket for this year. Guys, I hope you get a chance to get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. I'm Captain Greg DeBrule of the party boat Blackhawk out of Niantic, Connecticut. You've seen us at the sports shows, you've seen us on TV, magazines, newspapers, now you can come fish with us, okay? We're fast, we're clean, and we're comfortable. And besides that, we catch them, ask around. Come visit us at BlackhawkSportFishing.com. We'll save a seat for you. So after a lousy offshore weather week last week, things are shaping up from the Hudson to Baltimore through this weekend, mostly three to fours. But take a look at the midweek NOAA weather forecast for Friday night into Saturday. Practically lake-like conditions in that forecast, I sure hope it holds up. It's a good time to hit the mid-range fish pots in search of mahi. Uh, and it's been good when folks can get out. And we'll see after last week, not a lot of action last week, but again, three to fours, Saturday looks picture perfect. Get out there. In addition to the yellowfin and big eye in the canyons, we're still getting some solid reports of some really good Wahoo action uh, this season from the fishermen readers. Jared Morgan said he watches our report every Thursday. He sent me this one last week, a 55 inch, 63 pound Wahoo that he caught offshore. And Timothy Inchinaga and his son Kai hit this 73 inch monster uh, on the troll in the Wilmington Canyon on Saturday. Tim, Tim, Timothy said this fish was well over 100 pounds. Great wahoo season so far. Nice job boys with that. But we really have had uh, some really good wahoo action. Uh, if you want more on wahoo, go to Facebook. If you're on Facebook, uh, look up Who Hunters. Captain Darren Doris runs that. If you want some secret information on running out for some of those wahoo before it's all over, uh, go check that out again. We are in this overnight chunking season, right? We, we head into September and October. This is the stage of the game where folks are running out um, early morning to start the troll. Maybe they're, they're heading out around noon. You start to troll a little bit in the afternoon, set up on the overnight looking for yellowfin and swordfish. Uh, as dawn arises, maybe you troll around for a little while, look for some yellowfin or longfin. This is the time of year. Just keep an eye on that no weather forecast. And if you're booking a charter uh, for an overnighter, just be prepared for that late minute, uh, the last minute plug getting pulled on you. If you're planning to do a little bit of freshwater fishing at Assin Pink coming up, take note. The water levels at uh, Rising Sun and Stone Tavern Lake will be drawn down about six to eight feet this weekend for some dock work. That's going to be in place probably until December 1st. Also, a couple of events to tell you about for next week. First of all, I'll be out with fellow fishermen staffers next Thursday, September 22nd at the Huntington Hilton. That's on Long Island. That's the big fisherman inshore offshore surf event. It's a huge event, a lot of manufacturers. Uh, I'll be on the dais. Uh, with the folks from Gray Fish Tag Research and Captain Dave Marciano, if you if you watch him on Wicked Tuna, we're going to be talking about the Northeast Striped Bass Study. Uh, so you might want to check out that event. I'm staying over Thursday into Friday, then coming back, setting up for the big show out in Lakewood. Uh, that's September 23rd through uh, Sunday the 25th, the New Jersey Boat Sail and Expo. Great little event at Jersey Shore Blue Claw Stadium. Uh, it's one of the only boat shows that I know of where you can go in and walk through some used boats. 
That's right, take advantage of previously owned boats in addition to new ones. Whatever boats are available uh, in the New Jersey market, you can expect to find them next week in Lakewood. I'll be reporting next week from that stadium. Hope to see you out there at that event. Taking us out this week, my friend Ben Gilmore and your bucket list completion. I talked to a couple of people recently said, you keep pushing this, it's on my bucket list. Take advantage of it. The latest fishing report from Capos and Marina Pezvela, the report in Costa Rica. Again, I'll see you next week, either in Huntington, at the Jersey Shore Blue Claws Stadium, and of course, I'll be here right, right here, again, in front of you at thefisherman.com. Catch them up. Hey there, guys, checking in from the Marina Pezvela here in Costa Rica. This week's fishing report, mainly is all about tuna. We've had some really nice yellowfin tuna fishing offshore 30 to 40 miles from the marina. We've had some really nice tuna in the 30 to 50 pound category with some 100 pound plus fish also. There's been some wahoo over the offshore reefs, blue marlin and sailfish also. Closer to shore, we've had quite a lot of rain in the last couple of weeks, so our water is pretty murky, but we've still had some nice rooster fish fishing. There's some good roosters in the 30 to 40 pound range being caught, plus other species such as snappers, mackerel, and jacks. We'd love to see you guys down here in Costa Rica. Back to you guys.